You are listening to the LA Artist After Show, where we chat with the artist about anything and everything, most of which we probably forgot to mention during the podcast. So all of this is bonus content just for you. They are a handful. <laughs> I feel like a parent when I'm around them. <laughs> it's like, mom, don't don't pick that up. Like, like let, let me pick it up for you. Like, let's go to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah, like, like, let's go to dinner. Like, like, stop washing the dishes. I'll wash them. Like, you don't have to do it. Um, yeah, because they haven't been to Disney <laughs> since they took us to Disney. Oh. Which was when yeah. I was four and David was two. So, mm-hmm. so like, I'm th- I'm gonna be 33. So that's 30 years. Oh my so gosh, it's 30 been 30 years long. ago. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. So back fun. when there was no California Adventure. Oh, see, I gotta <laughs> take her yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, we're going to California Adventure because um, Disneyland. I mean, there's cool stuff, but there's it's mainly like heavy rides, heavier rides yeah. than um than California Adventure. And my mom can't do any of the heavier rides, mm-hmm. so we're just doing like a few a few little cars and head take her on little mermaid yeah 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 that, that's, <laughs> that's usually like our go-to like if things uh are like kind of packed and like uh like what we're trying to like oh what, what should we do while we wait I'm like, oh let's just do little mermaid <laughs> yeah <laughs> or like yeah if we're like waiting for like if abby like pre-orders food Mm-hmm. And then like okay, I'll be ready for pickup in like twenty minutes. Okay, cool. We'll do Little Mermaid like twice <laughs> <laughs> for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, with that, welcome to the after show where we literally talk about anything because uh, I forgot what we were talking about. In the so when one, was so. the last time you went to California Adventure? Yeah, uh, I went last year for my niece's birthday. Oh, yeah. Did you like it? Yes, definitely. <laughs> it's so fun to go with like kids and yes. yeah. With kids, yes, not with babies. No, not, not with no, babies. Yeah. No babies. I haven't, I haven't been with a baby, but <laughs> we did have to leave early for my youngest niece once. So yeah, yeah there's a lot um, of walking around. Mm, it is. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely. But you, but you, you missed that. The what is it? The 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 water show. Oh, yeah, you got to yeah, stay till the, like Fantasia and yeah the. the I, I don't know the names of them. The World of Colors. World there you go. Color. World of Color. Mm-hmm. World of Color. Yeah. I just call it Water Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it is one of those things where uh, World of Color is amazing. Uh, uh, did you guys do the Animation Academy? Mm-mm. So, yeah, uh, that one's really cool because, uh, like, you, they show you how to draw, like, one of the characters. And uh, the the artist that draws very informative, very simple, uh, easy to follow. Like they'll do shapes. They'll, you know they'll start off with like basic uh, shapes, circles, squares, triangles, whatever line work where the eyes go and stuff like that. And uh, it's really cool. And uh, it was one of those things where, like, uh, when uh, Abby and I went for the, the first time that I went after thirty years. Uh, I saw it and I was like oh like we should do that and she hadn't done it before mm-hmm. so I was like if there's anything because uh, I love uh, art uh, and uh, opera and Broadway and musical and theater so we're like we got to do that <laughs> and then like in front of it is the their little uh, theater as well so like we got to do that too <laughs> you know <laughs> Because she would just go for the rides and the food and like, no, let's just do something more than just that. Yeah, the activities and yeah. stuff. And I know a couple of the artists actually who um, have done the scenes. Oh, really? At, yeah, uh, at Disneyland. That's so. really cool. Okay, so question for you. Because uh, one of my goals that I'm kind of like planning out, I would love to do a podcast episode or a series of podcast episodes at disneyland talking with some of the disney artists oh yeah that's cool and and that's because it is one of those things where you know it feels different just being there and then just seeing the artists just there like Mm -hmm. waiting to get commissioned to do a piece like how does that come about like (laughs) who do you have to talk to like how do you get hired for that you know yeah and um like my friend dave parsons did the avengers murals like all the the whole murals 
in that yeah, section and everything. So cool. He does that like a lot so of cool. like bow work. He, he does a lot of different like techniques for like making things look like rocks and mm-hmm. metal and like, it, you know, I mean, everything down to the details. So that would be something cool too. To yeah. Get to talk about and, uh, and if we could do it at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> that, would, that would be the icing on the cake. Because yeah. uh, like uh, I, I did do a little bit of research where like you can get like filming permits and, and uh, like there's obviously press passes and stuff like that. So I'm like trying to figure out like like how much does, like who do I have to talk to first and like is there a cost for it and you know like what can we do and what can't we do mm-hmm. type of thing. But uh, soon enough uh, you want to do a. Uh, whenever you come back to the podcast like <laughs> we might be able to do it at disneyland i would love like, to just, go to disneyland right with you. yeah <laughs> just, yeah, just cool. get a little corner it could be behind like a yeah. shop or whatever it's like like but we're recording live mm-hmm. at disneyland <laughs> and you know we could talk about you know universal studios or something like that. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no but that would be fun. that would be fun mm-hmm. that would be so fun i was i was actually thinking like if we ever go to universal studios i'll I'll take my my Mickey ears. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, go, go to other parks with the with the Mickey ears. That would be funny. Yeah, kind of cross um advertise some of these conglomerate. Yeah. Right. Well, well, I don't want to advertise people that are not sponsoring me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so like, Disney sponsor us. Yes. <laughs> Talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Please, please help us out. We're we're trying to do a good name. Uh, give you a good name or whatever mm-hmm. but uh yeah, let us let us record an episode on <laughs> on your lot it would be really cool that yeah. would be cool but yeah and uh so what what else have you been up to like because uh, you well you said uh you went to disneyland uh with uh your nieces right like do you like any uh ride in particular um let's see well I really like the Matterhorn. That's a good one. Um, yeah. And uh Indiana Jones. Ooh. Yeah. The, yeah. Staple. Yeah. The, yeah. They're revamping that one. They added something to it. They reopened it again. So. Mm. Yeah, last time we were trying to was it open when we went last time? It was close. Oh, it was close. Yeah, cuz oh. they were doing I don't know what they were doing. They're, mm. Putting Harrison Ford's face back on, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's, you got to fix those characters every now and then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and then the other one, the <laughs> I guess similar to Matterhorn, the, the um, Splash Mountain. That they're one's gonna, also, that one's also getting revamped. Yeah, they're closing it soon, right? I I think it's closed now. Ooh. Well, it will be by the time this recording comes out. Oh yeah, it's closed now. <laughs> Or open. I don't know if you're listening to it in the future. <laughs> now it's a brand new thing. I guess. Um, but that one, like, uh, uh, that one has been. Every time we go, before we leave the park, we do Splash Mountain, just because there's no line at night. <laughs> yeah, and you do it at the end of the day, and yeah. you can be covered you in water. All, yeah, yeah, you go home all wet. <laughs> you don't get wet that no. much. Yeah, unless you're in the front row. Well, uh, mm. uh, well, I, I feel like if there's four, wait, what's the max? Is it four people? Six. six people. If there's six people, you get wetter because obviously there's more weight in the boat. Mm-hmm. Last time we did it and it was just us two, like we hardly got any water on us just because it was just us two. It's funny because like we were with friends and they were going to do um, par- uh, pirate. uh, pirates and the uh, so they did pirates, and then my brother and I did um, Splash Mountain because they didn't want to do Splash Mountain. Mm-hmm. And when we came when we came back and met each other again, uh, one of our friends got like her leg wet like big time <laughs> from 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 uh from pirates. From pirates. <laughs> and we hardly had any water on us from Splash Mountain. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you get for trying to right? avoid yeah. this. Yeah, splash. she was like, I don't want to get wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's what you get that's <laughs> what you get yeah but i don't know like I, I do like a lot of their art style like even walking through the little gallery sections that they have seeing all the art mm-hmm. uh, and the different interpretations of the different characters so cool. 
Yeah. So, but yeah, we should we should definitely go to well definitely do a podcast at Disneyland. And then oh. once we're done with the podcast, we just leave the park. Yeah. We just, <laughs> we just go home. No. Yeah, we just go home. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, what if we don't even do any other rides or anything? We just go home. No. You like, gotta go on one ride. Oh. You know? <laughs> like I, I wonder. Well, actually, I, I do have the technology, I think. Uh, I have lapel mic, wireless lapel mic. Mm -hmm. So we could do a, an episode on a ride, just screaming and yelling. Uh, all, well, actually, all we'll hear is like, <laughs> Which well, doesn't sound good uh, for audio listeners. Sorry for doing that, but that's what it's going to sound. We just. <laughs> I mean, unless we do an episode on cars, cars is long enough. Yeah. For a short episode. Yeah. So it's going to be like two minute episode. Well, actually, we could do the full episode in line. The it's quick, gonna the, be oh, like, yeah. Because it's going to be like. <laughs> Two hours. Just yeah, do the episode in line. <laughs> <laughs> Making the best use of that time. <laughs> yes. I can mm. do And then speaking of best use of time, uh, we do have another game, uh, another uh, questions game. Okay. Uh, oh, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for the after show in particular. Uh, we're calling it uh, Wow. Wrong answers only. So you're going to have 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. and you have to give only incorrect answers, only wrong answers, okay? okay? Oh, and you cannot say, I don't know. You have to. You, you have, have to, to say something. There has to be an yeah. answer. It has to be an answer. It has to be wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll try my best. Okay, so we're going to uh, start uh, the timer as soon as I finish the first question. Okay. Are and you if ready? You, and if you repeat an answer, you're going to hear, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are you ready for this? Yeah. What is your name? My name is Chris. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start painting? Yesterday. <laughs> Who is Van Gogh? He works at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> what sound does a dog make? <laughs> uh, what is your favorite color? Hmm. Clear. <laughs> Red and yellow make what? Green. I like nice. that. Uh, what's the last one? Uh, who is your childhood hero? Colonel Sanders. <laughs> and that's time. I mean, he does make good chicken. Yeah, <laughs> he does make good good chicken. <laughs> that one was the hardest one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like we started playing this because we saw another content creator like do these questions uh, to some of uh, uh, his friends and whatnot. And I'm like, dude, this is, this is perfect. Because <laughs> again, it's like people, if you, Ask them a question, they think of the correct answer, but if you tell them like wrong answers only, like, wait, what is the wrong answer? <laughs> yeah, it's the opposite of what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I think last time, who, who was it? Was it you that uh, said uh, red and yellow make zebra? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what does yellow, red and I think yellow make? I that's like a joke zebra. or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, thank you for participating. We'll <laughs> calculate all the the doodly doots and whatnots and uh afterwards because uh, uh yeah these these are always fun too like i have another one uh the uh, that's uh where are you right now what would you say where are you right now i'm in the pleiades Ooh. <laughs> and then uh uh name one thing you have in your pockets chapstick <laughs> But Wait, do you, 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 do you do? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you do? <laughs> Wait, you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, who, who was it? Mel said uh, the world. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> like, that was a good one. The yeah. world, yeah. I know. We're always just trying to figure out just random questions, too. Those are always fun. Though. Yeah. Yeah. It's It seems easy, but it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. but especially the colors one. Because yeah. everyone always thinks it's their favorite color. And then I do like the clear. Clear, clear color is my favorite color. 
Yeah, because I mean, we you varnish. Use... Yeah. yeah, varnish the paintings with clear, so we use it all the time. Yeah. So you got that one right, right? I don't know. Wrong. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> got the one right, which is wrong, which is right. And then what, when did you start painting? Yesterday. No, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm not a painter. <laughs> I'm not a painter. I was just walking by. I don't know who these guys are. So. I haven't started painting. <laughs> <laughs> and then Van Gogh works at Disneyland. Yeah. yeah. He does. He's one of the greeters. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he li- he's a good listener. He's a good listener. <laughs> He's a uh, model for the ears. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I want, now I want like Van Gogh Mickey ears. It's just one Ooh. ear and the other one's just like a bloody rag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just wrapped, it's wrapped in gauze with a little bit of blood, mm-hmm. like under. Uh, that would that would be a really cool. Or, or ear. it just co- it just covers one of your ears. Yeah, so it looks like it's... Yeah, so it's got one ear on the top and then just covering one of your own ears. Or it has Velcro on it, so you could take the ear off and give Ooh. it to someone. You... Oh. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> that, that would actually be pretty cool. That would be funny. I wonder, yeah, if we could, like, design... Because I know my mom can, can make them, but design, like, an artist series of ears. I would know? love those, yeah. Like, uh, but I want the Disney ears to be actual human ears. <laughs> yeah, well, one on the top, and then the other one that you could velcro on the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, what would be for Salvador Dali with, with giant the mustache? Yeah, mustache Super out of the ears. <laughs> <laughs> mustache out of the ears. Um, who else? We'd have like a lobster on top of the head. Oh, oh yeah, like melt, a lobster, a phone. melted. Yeah. Well, and, and then like for Picasso, it'll be uh instead of being circles, it'll be like <laughs> rectangles or squares or just geometry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would they would probably just be one on top of the other. <laughs> <laughs> the cubist hat. Yeah, yeah. one on top of the other. That be that be really cool. Uh, see what else? Uh, well, who Re- else? Rembrandt ears would have like perfect shadows. Mm-hmm. On, like deep deep shadows deep deep, deep shadows <laughs> on like on one side and then with the perfect like triangle in, in the middle mm-hmm. <laughs> oh what a, I don't know. I'm trying to remember all the other da vinci would have like an apparatus that would fly off yeah oh yeah <laughs> it'd have a pinwheel yeah, <laughs> a pinwheel. yeah. Or what was the the that helicopter one that was the umbrella that just oh, goes yeah. up and down yeah, that would be cool. It's <laughs> yeah. like an umbrella hat, but yeah. like the ears. <laughs> My, Michelangelo would have genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> With the option to put a little grape leaf on top, yeah. <laughs> oh, Michelangelo. <laughs> yeah. Imagine having to do like a whole like church. You like, oh, you want me to repaint the clothes on after you finish? Wow, I don't know. I know. You're gonna have to pay extra for those clothes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it would be similar to like the 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 style that you use, where you do it black and white, and like, mm-hmm. oh, you want me to add color to it? <laughs> so redo the entire painting again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or just or just make like little tiny jeans and just t- <laughs> <laughs> just tape them onto the <laughs> <laughs> cut, it, cut out jeans. No, <laughs> just get regular jeans. And just tape them on. That's probably why they even have the grape leaf in the first place. Like, well, it'll be a lot of work to paint the whole outfit, so <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna like censor a, a little. <laughs> a, a leaf is easier to paint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Paint little jeans. Paint little <laughs> jeans. Uh, well. What was on with the ballerina? Degas? Degas. Mm-hmm. So it would be just really floofy with the tutu? Oh, yeah. Tutu ears. To be legs. <laughs> legs. <laughs> just legs to the Just be legs. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then he would have to be in the mirror or in the background of the painting in a mirror. You see him. Because that's how it is on, on one of the mm-hmm. paintings. Mm-hmm. So he's just there in the background. How would I, well, I guess in the back of the ear, <laughs> it would be him there. Um, they well. sound like art pieces. Yeah, that's what it's just, but on ears. Yeah, yeah on, on the ears. <laughs> on the ears. 
and then uh, sell them for at least three dollars. Three dollars. Mm-hmm. At least. At least. At least. Like a set of Mickey ears are, on average is like thirty bucks. So speaking of Mickey yeah. ears, like, is there another style that you want to do, or for your next series? And your next series is going to be similar style to this bird series, right? Yeah, so definitely exploring like more within like the color planes and how they like overlap. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also curious with like using like elements of like 3D glasses and okay. like the blue glasses and seeing yeah. how, because this piece by surprise like ended up being really 3D with those type of glasses. Yeah. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I am kind of curious about like doing some experiments with that and like kind of how I can further get the color to make that illusion yeah. that it's like coming off the painting yeah, cause the 3d glasses that you use for this are they the the red and blue glasses yeah have you do you know about the the chroma depth ones um no so chroma depth is another type of 3d that uses uh the colors mm-hmm. so anything red would show up like on the foreground yeah and anything blue would be like deep in the background okay so so it'll it'll go red then yellow then green then blue mm-hmm. so with this one right here uh the one right behind you the the bird which is blue it'll be like way up front red oh, okay oh uh, i mean the red <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm sorry the red would be way up front and then the yellow on the wings would be like right behind it. Mm-hmm. And then the green background would be like a little push, bit further yeah, back, push, push further back. back. Mm-hmm. And then the blue that's on the back would be like way back there. So you, oh, would, yeah. you would have, I think we have some 3D or some chroma depth glasses. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. That I'd way love you could see. see them later. Yeah, on the Chamuco print, mm-hmm. it comes yeah. with them. Uh, yeah, because those, I, I think they use the, uh, the prism effect mm. where you know how a, a, a prism splits color yeah so it uses that because the glasses they're clear mm-hmm. but you know they have a specific filter on them that uh, it divides the 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 colors in almost a 3d plane yeah which is really cool yeah which is slightly different than the uh, red and blue which kind of like more divide color or just those two particular colors yeah. yeah, that's interesting too. Cause like, um, maybe even just using like one color, like I was noticing, I would close one eye just to use the blue mm-hmm. lens in this painting, and it was actually more dramatic of an effect yeah. with like pulling the other blues out. So, I would love to like explore the idea of of that, but without the glasses too, like having like planes of color mm-hmm. like in front Ooh. of the paint, like maybe for like yeah. the art installation. That would be really cool. Yeah, Yeah, because that's something you were thinking about for the Torrance Art Museum installation, right? Yeah, definitely. Like, so I'll be using like lighting effects, like Mm -hmm. lights that oscillate different color, and then um, kind of experimenting with that using the lighting. But like going forward in the future, I mean, if I perfect world, if I can come up with (laughs) another experiment, you know, I would have like some sort of like filter with that color, like. you know, because I think the idea of having the glasses on is like it's cool, but it also is like limited to these glasses yeah, you put on. Yeah. But to like have it be part of the piece and it's actually yeah. like mm-hmm. interacting and mm-hmm. um, it kind of like helps to explore and have fun with the idea of color and how, yeah. um, you know, there's these illusions with our eyes and like it kind of makes the, the painting more visceral and like yeah. interactive. And, yeah. Sure. memorable of experience i can think that yeah that, that would be really cool i like that uh have you thought about using like fluorescent paint yeah actually this is a fluorescent oh really yeah oh, i didn't even try it yeah and I, I don't think i tried it either i don't think I have, but i did we'll, use the paint we'll we'll try it we'll try it later yeah that'd be i have fun. i have i have my flashlight somewhere yeah yeah cause it would be cool to definitely to make more of an environmental experience uh, especially with color 
Yeah. Yeah, because uh, like you, like with, with using the different filters, um, uh, in photography, you use that with uh, black and white photography. You use red, yellow, orange, and blue filters of various densities, mm-hmm. and it gives the painting a different effect. So, like, if you're looking at uh, a green landscape with a blue sky and you use uh, a red filter, it'll make uh, certain sections brighter or darker. And, like, if you use a blue filter, it'll reverse it. And uh, so, depending on what colors you want to pop or if it's if there's not enough contrast, uh, you can uh, have Andy's stomach be growling in the background. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can add contrast by just adding a a filter to the black and white uh, photography and it's a really cool effect it it really is kind of dramatic which is the fun part yeah that's that's awesome i think it's part of this whole experience for me is like i want to just learn the most i can about light and color and kind of like i think going through that process with the viewer like by having these type of like installations or effects like it just makes it more memorable and then stand yeah. out because we also get kind of like numb to the idea of seeing art. I think like sometimes on social media, it's just scroll through and yeah. you have like two seconds of looking at a painting that someone may have spent like months on and, and um, trying to like elevate that experience by having these more in person and like very like interactive. I think it helps remind people like, how important it is to like you know not only create but that process and then also the process of like viewing art and like making that like oh this was something like really special that someone made and like you know and I I do it myself like you know we only have so much time to look at things during the day but um you know really taking the time to like go see art in person I think if that's um any message I can give to the viewer like (laughs) it it, it makes a difference yeah It, it really does like, yeah, on your phone, you could zoom in, but like when you're there, you can see details that your phone pixels are not going to pick up. Yeah. And you get to actually experience, whether it be a, a large painting or a small painting, you get to experience it fully mm-hmm. with your own eyeballs that have a higher resolution than any camera. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because not all our cameras are that great and we're not really. Yeah. photographers either so yeah. we try the best we can to get good yeah. pictures of our art but yeah and and even at that it's like yeah you might have a good camera but you know instagram is still going to compress the image because they don't have a lot of storage to just hand out to the world so it's like they have to make it as good but as low quality as possible because otherwise it would be like terabytes per person mm-hmm. and whatnot. so in person is better yeah and yeah. in my case, um, I don't take pictures of everything I do. Mm-hmm. So, so well, which I've been trying to get better at. Like, oh, did you finish that? Okay, let me take a photo before you. Yeah. Saw it. Well, I take pictures of most of the big ones that I do, but the smaller ones, um, it's just way too many. Yeah, you're it's super prolific. Many, so, I can see that. So, uh, watching it in person, you're like, oh, I didn't see these before on social media. Mm-hmm. because i don't put them on social media yeah so there's there's some things that you can only see in person yeah. so there's also that exclusive exclusivity yeah mm-hmm. and getting something fun yeah and like not only seeing the art but also getting to talk with the artist too like so yeah. i'm so grateful for experience like this where i get to actually talk mm-hmm. you yeah. know about like like um who I am, what the process is, and like we only really get to do that at art shows. Yeah, that that's true. Yeah, because uh, uh, again, like having the the community of artists is great, but every now and again we only see each other at art shows mm-hmm. if we're both at the same art show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, every now and again, like we will go visit somebody else's show, but if we're not a part of it, like we tend not to go. Sometimes. Well, yeah, because you're super busy. Yeah, because you have something else to do, or you're mm-hmm. ha- finishing art, and so like having a place like this, which we will do a couple more episodes. Uh, I want to do some group shows, so like just group episodes where it's like maybe four of us or five of us, and then just chit chat about anything and 
and everything. And uh, but yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. Hopefully, you like the podcast. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, well, I already said I gave you an A. So oh, okay. yeah. Well, yeah, but that was on the main body. Like this is, oh, okay, yeah, this, yeah. this is the after show. <laughs> yeah, after show is great too. Yeah. Like audience, audience it needs, numbers. It needs more coffee. The after show needs more. Yeah, coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a, a sneak peek behind the curtain. Like we record both episodes at the same time. Um, mm-hmm. No, we don't. Uh, I like, mean, uh, yeah, this is uh, three yeah. years later. <laughs> uh, we recorded the first episode, and then a week later, we record the next episode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we just wearing the same clothes because it was laundry day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, but no, it, it is fun to do all these episodes and just to hang out and chat and chit chat. And uh, I still feel like you should put Mickey ears on your birds, but uh, that that's just me. Well, yeah, now I've gotten so used to them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm missing something. Yeah, <laughs> cool yeah. silhouettes. <laughs> yeah, little, little, little Mickey ears. Mm. <laughs> oh, are the ears comfy ish? They are. They are. Okay. Yeah, and these ones were custom from yeah your paintings. Right? Yeah, cause cause these official Disney ones they kind of like a little <laughs> bit tight. So after a little while, it does start to hurt. Mm-hmm. But uh, we try to get we try to get the the little the headband ba- the headbands to be a little bit looser. Yeah. Cause these, oh, that's great. Yeah, cause these are these are kind of like tight yeah and i'm pretty picky with like headbands and mm-hmm. stuff like sensitive even with the glasses and mm-hmm. stuff and can go all good. day wearing these yes. yeah <laughs> yes yeah because i feel like the disney ones they do well they have to also market for kids so yeah they like so they're, they're a little bit smaller, smaller yeah. Yeah. what we're wearing kids ears i thought these were for adults well, well that one's for no, adults just yeah <laughs> that one's for adults yeah. this one's for kids. <laughs> yeah. and and this this is a uh, uh uh, an official uh, Mr. David Ronald hat, <laughs> <laughs> or no typos hat. Oh, but uh, but yeah, we should we should do more randomness. I don't know. I'm tired. Custom okay. custom art, <laughs> like custom artist Disney ears would be cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like wearable art too. Yeah, wearable. Yeah, like, yeah. I've thought about that. Um, I've but not been- not just t-shirts. Yeah, no, like something's a little more elevated. Like I painted um, a jean jacket for my cousin mm-hmm. before and like it with the fabric paint and stuff. And then some of my friends who do like upcycling clothes will have um, like hand painted leather jackets. Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Other things like that. Yeah, we, we have thought about doing uh, like for the jean jackets, like just cutting out panels like uh canvas panels mm-hmm. that kind of fit most jean jackets because in the the back uh, section of the jean jacket is somewhat rectangular mm-hmm. and it's almost always the same size for most jean jackets yeah so just doing the loose canvas that people can just like uh, uh safety pin on you know like a punk style ask but a, a painting yeah that's so, really cool, that would be cool. Makes it a little easier than like, oh, what size are you? And like, okay, hopefully I can find the exact same size that fits you or your body type or whatnot. And like, and then painting something on it and then giving it to them. And they're like, oh, it doesn't fit anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Because uh, it, it, it takes a couple of months to do the artwork or whatever. Yeah. And we're not like making jackets here, but we are making art. So yeah. like making it work with that and like yeah. have more wearable art too. Like, mm-hmm. I think there's definitely something there because. Not everyone has the space to put up paintings or like they already mm-hmm. have art in their spot. And yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's part of the main reason why we did pins. Mm. It's like not everybody can have a painting, but they could have a pin somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> on their, on their jacket, clothes, on, yeah. on their hat. On the... We should do glass. Mm. Well, glasses. I, don't know, I was just thinking wearable art glasses. Mm. People wear glasses. Yeah, like paint, the frames. Paint, like, no, paint yeah. on the lenses. Paint uh, on the lenses. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just paint <laughs> the entire <laughs> lens and put like little yeah. holes so you can yeah. see through. Yeah. <laughs> no, the um what was it? The one that had the like little slates? Little yeah. yeah. I don't know. Back in 2000 or whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> they were big a big deal so you could just paint on that yeah well yeah well even what she said like all you need is like this one little dot like that's dead center or close to dead center and you can see a lot through that those little holes 
I had a pair of like joke glasses when I was a little kid that was like looked like someone's eyes with like a little hole in there <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. could like be asleep in like class and right. it's like you're awake and yes. wearing glasses. <laughs> we need we need to bring a lot of 90s stuff back mm-hmm. but that is originally made not just like uh remade with uh with plastic or like no it's gotta yeah. be when we were kids my dad like we were uh universal studios and my dad bought us some glow in the dark sunglasses. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so we could wear sunglasses. So that night. Were yeah. they like dark frames too? You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean they were sunglasses. So yeah. yeah. Dark frames. And then uh, at night they would glow. But you couldn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But it was fun though. It was fun having having those glasses. Yeah. We we definitely like would use them like for I don't know, several months at a time just because they're like, oh yeah, look, I have my cool sunglasses that glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything in my room. I have them all. Yeah, those were fun. And you could always find your friends in the dark. Yeah, who's wearing them? <laughs> friends or frames? Oh, friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> like if your friends oh, wearing like, them, oh, you could find them yeah, in the dark. Yeah. yeah. You can't find them. <laughs> yeah. Find my frames. But you should do glow models. in the dark frames, maybe. It, yeah. If they bought them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. I know, like, yeah, because there, there's been a bunch of stuff that's been coming back. And, uh, oh, one of the craziest things, speaking of the 90s, uh, I don't know if, if you saw the reel or there's a new TikTok challenge. Uh, sorry, new generation, but uh, there was a new TikTok challenge that is, can you write your name without lifting up your pen? Hmm. Isn't that called, like, contour? It's called cursive. Drawing. Cursive, yeah. It's just, just, it's just cursive. It's just yeah, cursive. that is just cursive. <laughs> it's just cursive. Can they do it? <laughs> Good for, they're doing the challenge. I I'm mean, like, yeah, it's not a challenge. It's, it's, yeah, just learn cursive. You yeah, can do it. yeah. It's like, it's, but it's, yeah, no, we we did contouring in uh in drawing class in high school where yeah. you that, draw that was, some, that was fun. Yeah, you draw something without lifting up your pencil. Yeah. Yeah. That was um, when I auditioned for the art school. That was one of the the tasks they had. Oh, really? Yeah, doing a contour drawing of um, your hand. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. yes, I, I I remember doing that. I uh, did a shoe. In one of my, mm. but like I I did my hand. But uh, our teacher challenged us, or, or challenged a select group of us, uh, just because uh, he saw a little bit more art potential on, on us, to do your hand, but without looking at the paper. So Ooh. like you you had a face away from the paper and do contour of your hand uh, without lifting up your pen and not looking at what you're doing. That's and, a uh, fun challenge. Yeah, I, I, I got pretty good. My pinky was like way off by like about an inch, mm-hmm. but uh, everything else was pretty good. So uh, and and one of the things that he would tell us is like you can't go like if you are looking at your at the paper, you can't go back through the same line. Mm. So it like. If you have to go back, you know, whether it be up or down or to the side or whatever, you can't just track another line. It has to be either slightly off or just find a different way to do mm-hmm. it. So it's like, which is fun because, you know, you do it and you like, oh, I have to go backwards or I have to do a full circle like three times. Like, well, now it's three circles, mm-hmm. not just one that you could go over and over and over again, which is fun. Yeah, I love little like challenges like that, like and having fun with it. Sometimes we'll do that at the doodle fiestas. Too, yeah. Like pass around pieces of paper and everyone does a part or contour drawings. I think it would be fun to do like portraits of each other, like Ooh. like contour portraits and that would be cool. Yeah, like just making it more accessible and like free flowing and it doesn't have to be this like perfect thing, but yeah. it's also a fun challenge. Yeah. And I, an idea that we had, um, with uh the squeeze art collective uh because we would also do the um doodle doodle. yeah yeah that's how it started yeah (laughs) so we had an idea where we would or or they wanted to get you know the best of the of the doodles Mm -hmm. and make like a showing do like a little gallery showing so like having them on the walls and all that like 
of like hundreds and hundreds of doodles. Oh, cool! That would be that would be a good idea, like a cool idea for for Doodle Fiesta. Like, yeah, if we keep or if you guys keep some of the some of the doodles mm-hmm. and then just pick and choose, you know, a good section of of good doodles because. I mean, it's doodles. Not 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 everything is good. Yeah, because <laughs> we just we're just messing around. But you know, keep some of the some of the nicer ones, and then uh, see if we could do some sort of showing. Maybe even at at the Katie Phillips Gallery. Oh yeah, right? that's a good I idea mean, too. Like she she started it. Yeah, <laughs> she, she started, did. Yeah, yeah and a lot of the in Chroma Pop is found with mm-hmm. the you know the members of Squeeze, and exactly. so like this is an extension of that, and like. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I have saved almost all the doodles that are left there. Mm-hmm. And so I have a portfolio with there like, you go. Yeah. anyone who's left a doodle at Doodle Fiesta. I have. So mm-hmm. that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Just save, like, have a, have a good, like, collection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we'll figure out if we yeah. could do something like that. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, you know, we can easily, like, just get uh, the, the mats uh, and then just, put a nice mat on it and then just stick it onto the wall. It doesn't have to be like fully framed, but mm-hmm. like with a nice little border and then just have like a nice collection of them. That'd yeah. Be really cool. So we have, we have some of these frames. Oh, nice. Yeah, some the of mat. these little mats. So we could just, you know, make them a little bit more presentable. Mm-hmm. Not, not just, not just little random doodles. Yeah. And then yeah. just stick them on the walls and just have like a little, little gallery. Yeah. Of all the different Chrome, ones. Chrome of Pop Doodle Fiesta Gallery. Yeah, yeah that would be awesome. Hmm. And then, yeah, because that would be really cool. And then just make that, you know, a section in the middle of interactive where it's like people can doodle. Mm-hmm. And uh, if they have any questions, the artist can like help them out or, or like give them challenges like the contour. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, there's contour practice section or whatever. And then this is colored practice section or whatever. Uh, that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. And I love that, too, because it makes mar- art more approachable. Like, it's one thing to show, like, you know, these paintings that we spent a lot of time on and mm-hmm. poured our blood, sweat, and tears into. And it's another thing to show that, like, this is fun and we are, like, interactive and engaging with each other. And yeah. these are just techniques. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, the more we, like, demystify art, the more approachable it becomes in our everyday life. And you don't have to reserve being an artist to make, like, you know, a nice painting. You can doodle all over notes like in, yeah. you know pieces mm-hmm. of mail that could be mm-hmm. something that mm-hmm. you know just has a little drawing on it and that's definitely where i started so i think it's great to engage with the community and remind us too how accessible it is yeah. i'm done i do any way I, I can help let me know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh yeah because like these the they're five by seven with a uh four by six cut out well technically like three and uh, three and three fourths by five and three fourths, kind of mm-hmm. whatever. But they're inexpensive. Uh, you could we, again buying in bulk, uh, <laughs> like a hundred pack. That's like maybe thirty, forty bucks for a hundred of them or something like that. And it'll come with plastic and everything. Yeah. Oh, nice. But again, it doesn't have to be fully like that. It could be just, just the the just mat, a, just a mat frame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I've done that for some of our uh, like artist bios and stuff like that, just have the artist bio, put that mat on it, and then just stick it on the wall. And it looks a lot better than just putting a piece of paper on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Even if it is cardstock or whatever, it's like that's a little bit more pizzazz. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, then it takes it from looking like it's like the refrigerator that you yeah. put all the doodles on top of. Like, exactly. To the gallery space. Yeah. <laughs> And then you could even sell some of the sketches like five, ten bucks or whatever. Yeah. And two then, billion dollars. I know. <laughs> two billion dollars. And then all of that all of that resources go to, you know, the the collective for to be able to do more stuff. Yeah. So, well, that's a great idea. Uh, just it just reinvests into the collective so they continue making more stuff and then just reinvest and reinvest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd yeah. be interesting. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. And again, but again, thank you for being part of the, the podcast. And uh, like, I know you already gave us an, an A, but uh, can it be an A plus? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. And that is the sound that 
our time for the podcast has <laughs> come to a close. Okay, you get an A+. Plus. <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> but again, thank you for being part of the show. And, uh, and again, all the links will be in the description. Uh, be sure to check it out. And uh, it's always fun to chat. Oh, it was good to have you. <laughs> thank you. I had so much fun. I forgot we were recording. So <laughs> hopefully this sounds good to the viewers. And thank you for listening. It's like, it, it better. No, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but again, uh, you've been listening to the Lardis Podcast, The After Show. You have been listening to The LA Artist Podcast. Feel free to like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss the latest episode. You can see bonus content on our Instagram at Lorano Gallery as well as our website, lorranogallery.com slash podcast. Stay creative, keep creating, and no matter what, be passionate about your art. <laughs>